Sonic, the heart of your system. I'm Neil Wood for Kit Guru. This is Leo Says, my occasional opinion piece, number 23, would you believe? Uh, so, the football's over, England lost. The tennis at Wimbledon is finished. Uh, wasn't a Brit in it beyond, I think, a doubles uh, series uh, after the first couple of rounds. Uh, I've dismantled my Corsair 1000D builds, which is why the shelves behind me are now full of good kit once again, because that system took an awful lot of hardware and we're ready with the news from the top apple launches new macbook pro these are specifically with uh, eighth gen intel processors and they're in 13 and 15 inch forms but the 13 and the 15 are quite different to each other so the 13 inch uh, you can either have a quad core core i5 or core i7 and intel graphics the 15 inch you can have either a six core core i7 or a six core core i9 but you get amd graphics pro 555x and 560x 555, I don't think we've seen that on the desktop. Uh, so we're talking pre-Vega graphics, but nonetheless, a distinct step on from uh, integrated Intel. I think you could argue as to exactly how uh, MacBook Pro that is, but it is notable that uh, Blackmagic has launched an eGPU with um, an RX 580. Uh, in it and that is a natural partner to this MacBook Pro. Looking interesting that is. Uh, we, uh, we're very keen on Blackmagic products here at uh, KitGuru, particularly their software. Uh, their DaVinci Resolve is absolutely fabulous and they seem to make particularly good use of the external graphics. So that pairing of MacBook Pro and uh, Blackmagic eGPU along with their software, there's an awful lot of uh, would it be confluence where things come together? I think that's the word. Synergy, certainly. Moving into the world of PC gaming, NVIDIA is going to be holding an event at Gamescom in Cologne in Germany late in August, about five weeks away. Uh, now, we would naturally hope this would be the launch of their desktop Turing graphics. Previously, we'd have hoped it would have been Volta, but that seems to be, you know, way off in the future now. Uh, so, Turing. Uh, the invitation for the event refers to seeing the latest games in action or some such wording. And that makes you think of Demo Battlefield 5, because that's heavily tied in with NVIDIA. And then the question has to be, running on what? I mean, the idea they're going to fly journos in to see a demo of a game, well, they might. You have to think that's going to be on something interesting in the way of hardware. You have to think new NVIDIA graphics finally rearing their head. As to when the launch will be, on the other hand, presumably later. So pick a month, September, October, uh, not now that's the point so computec been and gone various shows been and gone august it seems is going to be and late in august is going to be more of a teaser than anything that's the way it feels at the moment the sooner the better that's all i can say the sooner the better because at the moment as we'll discuss in the later topics the uh, disjointed nature of things at the moment where things are going heavily CPU rather than GPU it's just getting perverse. Roger Kaduri left AMD is now at Intel. In 2020 we're expecting to see a D GPU, a discrete GPU from Intel uh, which we have to assume is going to be some sort of scalable part presumably for uh, laptops maybe also for sort of smallish form factor PCs. Uh, you'd think um, yeah, their NUC um, because their NUC is actually quite an impressive bit of kit at the moment. And uh, I can't wait to see this. The more I think about this, the more it seems to me that apart from kicking NVIDIA at the low end would be the obvious thing uh, so they can get uh, their own graphics into laptops and replace the low end NVIDIA. Uh, this will also answer the question that's been rattling around for a little while, which to be absolutely blunt is, uh, was Raja incompetent at AMD or just very unfortunate? Did he inherit a terrible project or uh, did he basically break things? Uh, so if the DGPU from Intel turns out in 2020 to be a good thing, then Raja gets a gold star on the chart. If it turns out to be not up to snuff, well, that's going to say something against Raja. So it's a way off in the future. Uh, it, it does add extra weight to that product, however, but it could be quite significant uh, the DGPU, and I, for one, look forward to seeing it. Generally speaking, Intel graphics, I couldn't care less about. That's the truth of it. But in this instance, I want to see what they come up with. Uh, in the immediate future, uh, a very few weeks away, middle of August, almost certainly, AMD is going to launch second-gen Threadripper. I've discussed this before. This is common news. Uh, this is really just to catch up with the bits and pieces that we know, which really isn't much. So continuing using the uh, X399 chipset, continuing to use the TR4 socket, uh, the 24-core apparently is going to be called 2950X, the 32-core 2990X, 
that's strange because at the moment we've got the 1900X, 1920X, 1950X, and you'd think if they took the 1950X 16 core and changed the one to a two, that would be the 2950X. So the numbering appears to go out of kilter. You can't just change a one to a two to get the second gen part, if you see what I mean. Uh, I don't quite know how that one's gonna work out because I'm assuming that they will continue in the second gen to have 16 core and down. Perhaps not, perhaps it's gonna be the new ones will be 24 and 32 core. I would be really surprised if that's the case. So the model codes would appear to be going wrong. Uh, TDP on those high end parts, 250 watts, uh, I struggle to believe that revised 16 core, 12 core will also be 250 watt. I cannot see why that would be. Uh, so that would suggest the uh, second gen Threadripper is going to have uh, a number of different TDPs, possibly just the two, you know, 150, 250 or whatever. But uh, we're going to have to see how that one comes out. But as things stand, basically it's a very few weeks away very keen to see this product in action because as I said before this is something I personally wish to drop into my own PC I want to update my 12 core Threadripper 16 core be a, a decent upgrade forget that I want to move on move on up and then we come to Intel and it's been just a world of chaos I've done a bit of research into families of processors that are coming along and in many instances we simply don't know uh, what whether they'll happen because Intel has just been in uh, turmoil for the past few years so 10 nanometer just catastrophically uh, hasn't happened 14 nanometer you know plus 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 or whatever it might be uh, but here are the families of processors of interest to me and there are a great many other families of processors that are either in development or have actually launched which I just couldn't care less about the ones I'm interested in Cascade Lake AP for advanced processor this uses a BGA 5903 uh, socket and uh, apparently copies the CCX idea used by AMD with a Ryzen Epic, i.e. it's modular, uh, so they can take two bits of silicon and put them together, which is hugely ironic considering uh, Intel was so rude about uh, AMD, quote, gluing together, unquote, their uh, Ryzen and Epic cores. So how they will connect these uh, two bits of silicon, that's a big question. But the point is getting away from monolithic, going towards modular, uh, way overdue and looking forward to seeing it. They have done this before with Knight's Cove, which would have been a successor to Knight's Landing, was gonna connect two 22 core Ice Lake X's together uh, to create a 44 core processor. Uh, you'll appreciate I'm reading that just off the paper because if I try and memorize that, I'm gonna trip over my words, something horrible. So with the Cascade Lake AP, the question is how will they connect those dies together? And at the moment you think EMID because that's what they've got. Uh, Intel being Intel, they might use something that's not actually like the current EMID, but they call it that because that's the sort of thing that they do. So you have one name and it's actually completely different technologies or it might achieve the same thing in a different way. And then there's gonna be some sort of logical thing, um, much like Infinity Fabric, you would think in principle, but presumably doing things the Intel way. And then you have to wonder about memory that will go along with that. Will it be 12 channel RAM? Will it be 16 channel RAM? What are they gonna do? Um, and the reason I'm saying that is when you look back, BGA 5903, that's an awful lot of pins or contacts if you're being really pedantic. Uh, they have to be doing something with all those contacts and multi-channel DDR4, that would seem to, uh, assuming it is DDR4, uh, that would seem to be a way of using those contacts. That would be a leap on for Intel with a huge socket. And of course it says nothing about the process. It's changing the way they currently do things. Long overdue, let's face it, AMD has proved it works. AMD's done that in the past. They did the 64-bit uh, x64 CPU, bang, it works. They've done integrated memory control, that works. Can't remember who integrated PCI Express control. Was that Intel, was that AMD? Can't remember. Um, but uh, in the past, AMD's come up with a brilliant idea, proved it works, Intel's gone, that's a brilliant idea, we'll take that. Uh, so uh, we look forward to Intel's own, quote, glued together, unquote, CPU. In this case, Cascade Lake AP. And then we move on to the desktop. The HEDT, high-end desktop, in uh, Computex 2017, uh, Intel launched Skylake X on LGA 2066, which was replacing the LGA 2011. Uh, and that process went up to 18 cores. Now the launch was perfectly okay. Uh, products that came out immediately after were criticized for heat and power, but they were stepping on from 10 
up to 18 cores, so it's a big change. And you might argue the motherboard manufacturers didn't do the best job in the first instance. That was really a problem that afflicted overclockers rather than the mainstream user. However, in the mainstream, I'm not sure how many users there were. Those 18 core processors in particular, brutally expensive. And in 2018, we're expecting to see Skylake X replaced by Cascade Lake X. Minor updates, so still 14 nanometer, plus, 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 plus. Uh, very small clock bumps, 100, maybe 200 megahertz, and still 18 core, or possibly 20 or 22, but let's say 18. Uh, and then we had Computex 2018, where we had that demo of the 28 core. This brought in a number of things. So clearly that was uh, extreme core count Xeon. Okay, instead of um, uh, the high core count, it was extreme core count. That, that's accepted. It's a repurposed Xeon. LGA 3647. And it was up to 28 core. We know Intel can do that. None of this is a mystery. Uh, six channel DDR4. Uh, overclocked to five gigahertz and then we had the cooling thing okay that's all ancient history now I'm not good ancient history but it is ancient history the name of that platform appears to be Cascade Lake X well Cascade Lake X was due to be the different socket uh, that would have been LGA 2066 so if LGA 3647 is now going to be Cascade Lake X what's going on by the end of this year we expect to see Cascade Lake X and it would seem that there's going to be two things called Cascade Lake X. That's how it looks to me anyway. I mean, you'll appreciate Intel saying absolutely nothing about this. This is just putting bits together. So we would appear to have the up to 18 core Cascade Lake X on LGA 2066, which, which is just a revision of Skylake X in that sense. So worth having, but nothing too exciting. And then we get the big boy, which is the... 28 core is the top of the tree, so presumably a 26 and a 24 core, which makes you wonder, will the junior version, the 2066, uh, go up from 18 core to maybe 20 or 22 uh, cores? Possibly it will. There might be a little bit of a shift there. But 24, 26, 28 cores, they will need to be this LGA 3647. And then you get the frankly trivial question from our point of view will it be uh, Skylake SP Xeons or will they be true Cascade Lake X now I personally don't particularly care because processor in socket single socket it does what it does and we see how it behaves and we see how much it costs that's going to be interesting to see but if we take the high-end part up to 28 cores being ultra high-end desktop and we call it cascade lake x lga 3647 then we have a naming thing going on is it possible that there'll be one name covering two different sockets if that's the case i've never known intel to do that in which case they can't both be Cascade Lake X, not on past form. Uh, I cannot think for one moment that the uh, LJ2066 is going to be scrapped and all those processors are going to migrate up to 3647, a new platform. I cannot see that happening. Uh, so there will be this family of high-end desktop through to ultra-high-end desktop on two sockets, but I cannot think they will both be called Cascade Lake X. So somewhere the naming for that has gone adrift. Clearly the power levels for those processors are going to be monumental. If AMD is going up to 250 watts for its 32 core part, then you'd think Intel is going to be doing something similar for its 28 core part. You know Intel is going to want to go higher on clock speeds. Uh, so... How high will they go? 250 watts would be the obvious point. Uh, but Intel does have form uh, on LGA 3647. Knight's Landing, my notes say 260 watts. Knight's Mill, 320 watts. So if Intel wants to go faster uh, with those cores, it could go to 320 watts. Who knows, it might even go higher. We certainly have the cooling technology to uh, handle that sort of level of uh, power and heat. Uh, after all, GPUs are very, very juicy. Uh, so... We'll have to see, obviously. 250 watts, I think, will be absolutely the starting point. Once you start overclocking, you know, a thousand potentially. But 260 and 320 at the moment are stock figures. Why not? It would be entirely reasonable and yet mildly terrifying. And as I said earlier, that's where we get this kind of disparity between graphics and processors. If you've got uh, you know, 32 core processors, 28 core processors, 250 watts running around the four gigahertz or even faster potentially, but call it four gigahertz speed. We need some beefy graphics to back that up. And at the moment, we just don't have it. Here's a philosophical question, which leads into the next point. So it's not entirely philosophical. If Intel had been able to progress beyond 14 nanometer and clearly hasn't, it's just been a 
complete mess. How many cores would they currently have in their high core count and extreme core count silicon? The limits at the moment are 18 and 28 cores. Clearly with a, a smaller process, you'd expect it to be more. More than 18 and more than 28. But I don't know how much more. So the 18, call it 24 cores possibly. Uh, the 28 core, 36 possibly. 32 at least, surely. 36, maybe 40. Uh, we'd be in that sort of territory. Um, split the difference up to 36 cores. Now, they're, they're not there, but obviously companies have to have a roadmap and they work along it and then they realise they've got a problem or not. So at some point in the past, Intel will have had a roadmap showing what their extreme core count silicon was going to have in the way of cores on 10 nanometer at this stage, which hasn't happened. My guess is 36 cores. Computex 2018, AMD said that Epic Rome would have 64 cores, 128 threads using seven nanometer process. This is the Zen 2 architecture. And what they specifically told us in June, this is 2018, was they had silicon in labs now. They'd be sampling H2 2018. Well, okay, I mean, that's now or it's November. Uh, and then they would launch in 2019. Well, that's January through to December. So a fairly wide range of dates gives them some flexibility, but the point is they're getting on with it. And we've subsequently heard that AMD's pulled back uh, on that uh, 64 core launch. They're now going to deliver a 48 core Rome before they deliver the 64 core. We kind of hoped they'd do both 48 and 64 simultaneously. And it seems to me the reason they're doing this is because they simply have no need to launch the 64 core. My guess is the 64 core was lined up uh, just in case Intel came up with some extreme core count Xeon that was truly wonderful and they just needed to crush it with a huge number of cores. They couldn't compete on IPC, but look at us, we've got 64 cores and that destroys your 36 core. And not necessary. Their 48 core is going to be so far ahead of what uh, Intel has this year and very probably next year that they just don't need the 64 core at the moment. Uh, it means presumably they can launch the 48 core at premium prices and make monstrous profits, justifiably so, uh, because at the moment Intel has got nothing to counter it. The 28 core Xeons against a 48 core Epic, I mean, that's not a fight, is it? Now, obviously, Intel will say, yeah, yeah, we've got multi socket Xeons and such, like, and this is all true enough. But the point is that AMD has a single socket processor that will just crush everything that Intel has. A remarkable state of affairs. So this once again proves the point. We need competition. In this case, we need it because AMD, and I can't believe I'm saying these words, is able to row back on its plans because Intel cannot keep up. A remarkable state of affairs. In the server market, AMD is fields ahead of uh, Intel. At the desktop, we know that actually AMD has quite a decent lead over Intel. Intel brings out the 8-core Coffee Lake with whatever the heck they're going to do with the Z390 chipset. They've got a dog in that fight. It's going to be down to pricing and down to motherboards in the usual style. -y. But uh, at the high-end desktop, ultra-high-end desktop, uh, so Threadripper territory against Skylake X, it's interesting stuff. Move on up to the uh, major core count silicon. AMD, absolutely crushing Intel. Quite remarkable. Intel, the sooner you can pick yourself up and do something about it, the better for us all. But as things stand, AMD, good work. If you like this video, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. If you're from Orphan Kit Guru, click to subscribe. Hit the bell button. We'll alert you to new videos as they become available. I'm Leo Wilder for Kit Guru. This is Leo Says.